All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your 52nd HTML5 tutorial. And in this lesson, now that we understand the basics of the Web Storage API and how it can store variables, I want to show you guys the application of basically when and how you would build a program that would actually be useful. So right now what we did is we built a program that can say, okay, name, Bucky, and we can save it and pretty much make the text appear over here pretty cool maybe but this is pretty worthless I could make I mean with this stupid thing why wouldn't I just write the text over here this is pretty much the most worthless program that I ever built well that isn't what the web storage API was built for I just want to show you guys that tutorial to give you guys a core foundation of the basics how everything is pieced together what it's built for is basically not only storing a single variable but storing multiple variables and values not only storing multiple variables but having it so you can go to a bunch of different websites the new boston.org forum yahoo and then you can go ahead and come back and all of your information is still stored for you pretty awesome so let me go ahead and explain to you guys how to do that the very first thing that you want to do is I'm going to be changing up this program a little bit instead of let me just go ahead and run this baby one more time instead of having it so it says nothing yet Haas whenever you first uh, go to your website I want to go ahead and display all of the variables you have stored so what we need to do instead of this display function passing in one parameter it's not going to be passed in any parameters and like I said I want this to display as soon as we go to our website so as soon as our website is done loading this do first function is going to be called so at the end of this function go ahead and call display and it's going to display all the variables on the right hand side so basically make sure you put this display at the end of your do first function. So now that you took your parameter out of this display as well, we can go ahead and start talking about the good stuff. Now check out our program right now. Right now we can type in something like person and Bucky and hit save and it's gonna go ahead and save that variable, but it's also gonna keep the value or keep the data in it in these text boxes right here. So what we want to do is whenever we click this button, we want to take whatever is in these text boxes and pretty much clear them out like that. So what we need to do is basically access the content inside it through this thing right here because document get element by ID value, this is a property that basically references the stuff inside the text boxes. So if we take that property and we set it equal to nothing like this, then whenever we hit the save button it's going to go ahead and save our data and then at the end it's going to reset the information inside to nothing so that is how we do that now that we did it for the first text box we can go ahead and do it for the second one by just doing that so now set the property of the value of text box 1 and text box 2 to nothing and then whenever we hit the save button instead of keeping the values in there it's going to clear them out just like that so the only thing I want to do after this is change this display function a little bit the first thing that I want to do is actually I think it would be better off if I just delete almost everything so of course we want to reference the right box still which is this blue box because that's where we're going to be displaying the information now after that what I want to do is I want to reset the inner HTML so right box inner HTML now the property inner HTML references anything inside this blue box so at first I want to say okay before I tell you what to write just don't write anything at all just clear if you had anything in there by default just clear it out so that's what that line of code does now what I want to do is I want to make a simple loop now why am I making a loop I want to loop through every single piece of information that we stored and I want to basically write each one line by line so go ahead and make a for loop and just go ahead and make a variable call it like X or something and set it equal to zero now if you say okay how do I know how many times to run this loop well each variable we're going to be putting on a separate line so you're saying okay then we probably need to run it as much as how many variables we have stored but how do we know how many variables that the user has stored in their session well what we can do is we can access a property called I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this session storage dot length 
Now what session storage.length is, is it's a property that's built in to your web storage API. And this property pretty much gives you the length of how many items are stored. So if you have five items stored, this would be five. If you had 18 items stored, this value would be 18. So therefore, our loop is going to be it's going to loop through the appropriate number of times and of course the last thing we need to do is x plus plus which pretty much means loop one at a time one by one so now that this is looping 18 times if we have 18 items five times if we have five items let's go ahead and put something to output on the screen the very first thing we need to do is we need to make a couple variables now at first what we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a uh, what's it called a variable just like before like person and I know I spelled that wrong, but Bucky. So person is basically the item name, the variable name. And I, kn I know I say like key item variables. I'm sorry if I'm complaining to you. I'll try to call them items right now. So person is the name of the item and Bucky is the value. So what we need to do is make one variable equal to the name of the item. Now how we do this is we just access session storage and just like an array, it has this built-in thing called key and you could pass it in excuse me a number like X so key 0 would be the first item in storage key 1 would be the second key 8 would be the ninth it's just like an array basically you know like an array is basically like a list of items and you can pass in the number of what item in the list you want to access this works the exact same way so pretty much it's going to loop through, it's going to pass these in the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and in return it's going to give you um, pretty much the name of the item at position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is like person, thing, lunchbox, tuna fish. It's pretty much a bunch of different names for items, and it's going to store those in the variable A so we can print those out later on. So. Oh, man, I'm running out of time. I'm just getting so excited. I'm running out of time. I, uh, I'm i not even going to have time to finish this tutorial. So I'm going to finish this tutorial in uh, number 53. But we only got like a couple more lines of code to cover, and then I'm going to be explaining it. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.